Hey, what's going on guys? Mike for Sunny Slip Homestead. Hey, today we're gonna be going over something kind of new. A little offbeat, it's a project, but it's something I'm gonna have a lot of fun with. So, let's check it out. And I wanna mention before anything else, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Like I always say, it's free man, and it don't cost you nothing. And it does us a lot of good around here. This is a 1971 Chevy C20 three quarter ton pickup. We just picked it up recently and we bought it for a father son project. This is going to be something that's going to be a prolonged project. It's not going to be a quick turn and burn like the normal projects that we do around here. But I kind of wanted to go over it because I've been, been neglecting making a video about it because we've had so many other projects going on. So let's go over this truck. First things first, this truck is going to be a somewhat full restore so our plan for this it may go in a couple different directions but a few things that i know that we're going to do is this is a long bed we're going to actually take this bed off and we're going to totally scrap it and start new we're going to go with the short bed even though this is a long bed frame we're actually going to cut and section this frame out so when we build the new short bed it'll fit and bolt right up on here now they do make kits for this that makes it very simple, strong. We can weld it in house and so on and so forth. But the first thing that we're gonna tackle is we gotta break this thing down. So first we'll start with the bed and then we'll start with the front end. And then eventually we're gonna take this whole cab off once we get the doors and interior busted out of it and we get the windows out and I start to weld in shore and supports inside so I don't tweak the cab. We'll wind up pulling this whole cab off and we're going to put it off to the side and we'll have it on a special rolling cart. Now, the way I'm going to do this and start this project is we're going to eat at it in small sections. It's going to be like a big elephant and we can't eat it all in one bite. So the body work and everything like that is probably going to be a little bit further down the line. But the biggest thing is, is we have to get to this frame. So once we bust this whole truck apart, we'll have a rolling frame. We'll pull the engine and transmission out. We'll... Uh, We'll cut and section the frame, put it all back together, and then we'll start wire brushing the frame, uh, taking all the suspension, like I said, off, and then we'll start restoring the frame, axles, the suspensions, brake lines, fuel lines, and we'll start moving on up. Now, everything on this truck is basically going to get trashed. We're not keeping anything except for the cab and the hood, believe it or not. Now, this truck may look somewhat clean to you but someone did a somewhat good job at hiding this but not really it showed its ugly face throughout the years when their patchwork started to come and raise its little head because they didn't do it correctly all right so this is what i'm talking about right here guys see this line right here straight in here someone folded in a piece of metal right here you can see it plain as day and that's what they use for a patch panel now, given the fact that somebody did some shady work here, you're starting to get rust up in this area as well. And that's never good because usually it goes from the inside out. And the fact that you have it back in here too, I mean, this stuff is just not worth the trouble of fixing. But it doesn't mean we're gonna get rid of it because there might come a time where I go a different route and I might wanna cut in and draft in a patch panel here later. It may be hard to see, but they pop riveted this rocker panel, this outer rocker panel, I believe over the old one. And then they slightly welded it up there in the corner. And then they did this nasty little pass job, patch job right through here. So this all right here is gonna have to come out. That's gonna get gutted out. And you can see right here, pull away this. He's popped a rivet in there and then he drafted it with Bondo, fender in the can, I like to call it, whole cab corner. Looking underneath the truck, I realized he never replaced the cab corner. He just covered it up. And guys, this kind of work is not acceptable. I could see right through there. I mean, why even waste your money? So it's just, it doesn't make any sense. The whole cab corner all the way to the rocker is going to have to re be replaced. And then I'll be cutting this out too because he, uh, he popped rid of a panel right over the rocker 
and I'm seeing that I have a lot of rust down in the toe plate kick panel back here, which is going to be a problem. That means I'll have to replace it too. Not fun, people. Now underneath this hood, she's a little crusty, dusty, but I think she's trusty, if I have to say it myself. Um, I can see where somebody got in the wiring harness on the back, but not a big deal. It's not totally mutilated. But we will be taking these inner fender wells, and we'll be getting rid of them. We will be trashing the radiator, keeping the front radiator support only. Uh, we're going to run the original motor, or this motor, should I say, that came with the truck. We'll be running this until we can get that 402 built up and put in here. And then we'll pretty much be putting everything back to stock. Uh, I don't think I'll be going with headers. I will stick with the horn exhaust manifold, and we'll go from there. So, yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty rough underneath here. The biggest thing I'm worried about is actually if I have rust and water buildup. Oh my gosh, and I think I might here. I hope it's not through because they're notorious for rusting back down in here and rotting the whole back side of the firewall out, which uh, can be a big issue. I'm not really seeing it, but you'll never know until you get the cab off. And you can start tearing this stuff in and getting the fan box and moving all this stuff. But that will come later because we will strip it down to bare metal. Alright. Now granted, some of these parts I will keep because I'm just going to use them as decoration. For instance, this grill. I will keep the aluminum grill. It's not too bad a shape. I'll keep the inner. But it does have a lot of uh, dents in it, tweaked. And it ain't worth keeping around for uh, restoring back on a new truck. So... We'll use it as shop art, and we'll put it up on the wall. We'll also be using that tailgate back there um, as shop art as well. And we'll be hanging it up here for decoration. So we're not throwing everything away. Just uh, finding a new way to use it is all. It's really tough to do what I'm about to do because this truck right now, I bought it for about 2000 bucks. Now, I went out the outskirts of town and went deep Iowa and got this truck. And I bought it for $2,000, all right? I'm going to tell you what I paid for. I paid two grand for this truck. Now, this truck in town usually sells for about $3,500 on a good day. And you can get roughly between $25 and three grand just to turn and burn and get it out of your garage. Now, here's the kicker. The minute I take this truck apart, the minute I bust the cab off, fenders, break everything down, the truck is worth nothing but parts. Some may say that, well, parts are worth more, the truck's worth more if it's parted out. Not in this case because there's nothing on here that's salvageable. The inner fender wells need to be gone through, the radiator support I'll be able to save, all the front clip needs to be gone, the hood's savable, the glass is good, I got one chip in the windshield, and actually it happened on the trailer. Driving down the road, a rock hit the windshield and it was perfect when I started. So it was like, oh my gosh, I hope this is an omen and going down a bad, bad road with this thing, but we're not gonna put that voodoo on this thing. We're not gonna put that bad juju on this project. So, back to what I was saying. Once I bust this thing down, I am committed, folks. I have to finish it out. Otherwise, it will get sold into uh, pieces as a project to somebody else, and everybody knows that. Nobody wants to take on somebody else's basket case or project, and two, there ain't gonna be much parts on this thing left over. Um, the only thing I'll probably be able to sell and make money off of if I decide to go in a different direction or something bad happens around here where I'm forced to sell this project is that cut and section frame would be worth something to somebody. I might be able to sell that for some money. So consider that before you guys buy projects. You're going to wait for that time when it's the perfect time to tear it apart. All right. So I like to go over the fact that we do have ourselves a manual transmission, folks. Um, four speed. Muncie four speed, these things are bulletproof and I am so stoked that I got a manual transmission. Now, on the other hand, Miss Sunny Slope, my lovely wife, Melissa, is not so happy because she never learned how to drive in manual. And believe it or not, I learned how to drive in manual when I learned how to drive. I've had manuals almost my whole life. So I really like the fact that it's a manual. The bad thing is um, the radio, it was a, uh, it was cut out. The two knobbers gone. We definitely want to go back to a two knobber radio because I like the old school nostalgic look. 
and they do sell the piece that I can replace this. You know, I even I never opened the dash. I never opened the ashtray. Oh, we got a GM key. I wonder if it's the same key. We got ourselves a treasure find, folks. It is. I found a spare key in the ashtray and a couple cigarette butts. You don't see that much around anymore. We'll put pistachios in that thing when it's fully restored. But I want to go back to two number. They do back back to what I was saying. They do sell a panel here. I would have to cut this out, reweld a new one. Not a big deal. Uh, we'll be going in, you know, going through this whole thing. We'll put carpet in it. We're gonna get rid of this nasty seat. This is. Um, uh, I, think, I think this came out of a Ford F-150, I think, honestly. Uh, we're going to be going back to the stock bench seat. It's going to be very plain Jane in here. I like stuff, stock and original, so we're going back to plain Jane. Let's see if she'll start. Now, I haven't started this in a couple weeks, so we're going to give her, give her, pump her up a little bit. I've got some work inside the cab to get done. So everybody knows the first thing we got to do with the project before you start any big project and you get into something fun is you got to get your stuff in order. You're going to be taking stuff apart and putting things everywhere. You can't have a workspace that's already a chaotic mess. So we got to do a few things around here. We got to get some stuff cleaned up. We got to start making some room. I got to get these old cupboards upstairs. Um, get some stuff off the shelves get them put up in the loft but one thing you have to do you have to have good tunes and you got to have some kind of tv or something some background noise while you're woo sawing on some metal and you're doing your project and working on everything you gotta need a little bit of uh, distraction so what we're going to do is my stereo system in my barn is a surround sound system and as, as you guys can see back there i've been hauling this old tv around forever she works at least it did when I moved from Texas, she worked. So we're gonna be installing that TV up above the toolbox. And I bought a little, I bought a little toy here that's gonna allow me to plug in my phone and view anything from my phone to my TV because we don't have cable down here and we don't have Wi-Fi down here. And the only thing I got is my cell phone signal, which is kind of sketchy at times, but we'll be able to do YouTube videos. Uh, if I get hung up on something with this project, my favorite go-to is obviously YouTube. So I'll pull the YouTube up, throw it on the big old TV up top, learn what I gotta learn, and I can sit there and work on something and watch that TV at the same time. So first things first, I think we're gonna get this TV installed. You ready? Yes. Let's do it. hooked up I'm able to stream from my phone directly to my TV which is awesome now I can listen to YouTube music Pandora and I can get everything I want off my TV now I just got to figure out how to HDMI from one to my surround sound system I have to get up there and play with the plugs a little bit but yeah not pretty not a bad deal so now when we run into trouble and we need some help we just fire up the YouTube on the TV up there Take a quick glance and get back to it. What are you working on, bud? The saw making. You're making a saw? Yeah. You got all kinds of projects going on. Yeah. Just cutting out by hand? No. Oh, man. You're using power tools? Mm -hmm. But it died. 
He's using power tools, guys. No power tools. No, that's for guys to brush their teeth. That is not your toothbrush. And if you guys are wondering about a name for this truck here, Sheila. heck no, we ain't calling it Sheila. <laughs> We're going to call it Felicia. Felicia. <laughs> Boy. It's going to be called Chuck. Project Chuck. After my old man. What a fitting weekend to start on a project. Father's Day weekend, guys. With Project Chuck. You don't seem too excited. Are you excited? Yeah. We're going to get this thing going. You trying to stab me with the saw? You plotting on me, boy? You plotting on me? You're moving my eyes, mama. Yeah, you plotting on me. I've got to keep my eyes on you. Okay. That's it in a nutshell. Pretty much hitting everything on this truck. My boy's going to really be doing a lot of this work with me. It's time to teach him how to weld and turn wrenches and see how mechanics work and get that part of his brain going. And actually, we're just going to be feeding it right now. So we're going to do a father-son project on this. The wheels are turning in his head. He's ready for it. He's 12. He's probably been ready for this for a while now. I'm starting to let him do things to his bike. Uh, you know, as kids, we always tore our stuff apart. And I'm letting him do that. But if you want to take your chain off, take your chain off. You want to take your wheel off, take your wheel off. You want to take the brakes off, take your brakes off. You just better figure out how you're going to stop that son again. Then you have to put it all back together. So he's been doing that. So it's time. It's time to get him to start turning wrenches, learn how to weld, and doing some stuff for me. He's going to make my job a lot easier if he knows those skills right off the bat at a young age. My dad taught me that. I hung over his shoulder, and I just wasn't the kid holding the flashlight. I was asking questions, and he was making me work. So that's my plan for him, and he'll thank me in the long run because everybody knows how much it sucks to have to pay somebody else to do work for you. It is horrible. Now, if you make enough money and you know how to do the skill too, yeah, pay somebody else to do it. Like I said, my time's expensive. And besides, I'd rather be drinking beer. Well, that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. And I hope you guys stick around and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, give this video a like so you can see what we do with this project. That I appreciate you guys watching, and I hope to see you on the next episode of Sunny Slope Homestead. See you guys.